Welcome back, guys, to Quantum Information. I've started a new podcast and oh, oh, solar eclipse. I started a podcast and I'm going to teach you guys how I do the audio. So here we go. So it's a collaboration with my friend Ken Howard from Portland, Oregon, and we use this site called Simplecast, where we pay a minimal fee, and it hosts our podcast and allows us to publish to various places on uh, the podcast space. So there's our, one of our episodes here. So what it sounds like. Each failure is a step closer to success. You're listening to episode four of Learn With Us. I'm... So the idea of this podcast is to share with you guys how you can teach programming latest trends in JavaScript, and it's kind of like an informal discussion between me and Ken. So in terms of the audio, I use GarageBand, and what I had to do was to get to figure out how to use one of these things. This is my H4N that I bought a few years ago for singing and stuff, but I never really used it much. But actually, it turns out to be a pretty decent mic. Probably affect the audio quite a lot there by holding it, but anyway. What we do is we record the audio on both sides. My friend Ken, if he is doing the editing, he will record his sound. I will record my sound in, on my end, and we will send the files to each other to whoever's doing the editing. And what we do is we also we clap so we get a, a little bit of a spike so that we can easily sync up the audio. So in this episode, we have two o o voice tracks here. And we also have down here our riff. So what we do is um, we import the audio file to this track here. And you can see it play. Uh... Each failure is a step closer to success. You're listening to it. Now there are ways to record the audio coming through the sound card, i.e. from Skype, from Ken's hand, and through my mic at the same time. There's something called Sunflower. But for me, I don't think it's that reliable right now and I haven't figured out how to use it. So what I'm just doing is we're both recording the audio and syncing them up afterwards. So what you've got to be really careful with is the audio levels here and also the, the input volume because if this is too high or too low, you can end up with some spikes and nobody wants to hear spikes because it sounds really distorted once you start audit, um, editing them. So when you're recording, you want to have at most yellow values here when you're recording the track. Now, one mistake that I'd done in a couple of uh, podcast episodes was I left reverb in as an effect. So if you click on tra an audio track here, you can see that there's effects. So if I just solo this, then you can just hear this section here. To episode four of Learn With Us. So, so if I click on the the track here, you can see that effects will be applied to this track. So if I just press play, increase the master here so you can hear better. So let me just find a section where I'm talking a lot. Uh, in fact, let's just talk go to Ken's because Ken talks more than me uh, in this particular video. So I'm going to solo him, and I'm going to play here. Today, thinking about what we're so these about. are the effects, right? Now what compression does is it makes the high volume levels less loud, and it makes the lower volume levels more loud. So if we just listen to this here. Today. We can turn the compression way up or way down or off here. And when you see these blue lines move up and down, it means how much compression is being applied. So let's play here. Because we planned so far in advance. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So you can hear, see here that the, the quieter sounds are made loud and the, you know, everything's sort of more flat. But if we turn this way down, you then... Don't plan in advance and that's what makes this show interesting. Uh, so we're going to talk about open 
open source contributions. And open it's, source it's quite software. a hard effect to, to realize, but it's quite useful. EQ, well, this is like if you have more loud frequencies or mid-range frequencies applied. And uh, what you want to do is uh, for podcasts, you don't need any reverb. One um, podcast I done, I had too much reverb and I, I didn't realize it was on and I couldn't figure out where the echo was coming from. So let's listen to it with reverb. Um, what kind of uh, open source software have you contributed to? Sounds like I'm in a cathedral or something. But open source contributions. It's also ambience. Uh, open source software have you contributed to? Oh. There's also Echo. I don't know why you want Echo on a track, but you can have it. Talk about open source contributions and open source software. software. Um, so anyway, of... these are the individual effects you can apply to each track individually. And you can also apply EQ individually. You can drag things around like this. Uh, open source software have you contributed to? Just... Good. If you want more lows, so, uh, we we started off uh, today thinking about what we we're going to talk what, about. More highs. We planned so far in advance. More lows. Um, no, I'm just that sort of stuff. Now, if you want to apply effects to everything at once, then you do the master track, which applies uh, effects and EQ to everything at once. I don't know what these do that much, but I haven't played, or played with them. But you can you can apply compression to everything at once, that's what master's for. So also another useful thing that you can do is you can do um, change the volume. So if you just uh, if we just solo this one here we can adjust the volume by making these little dots here. There's a way to add them, so you can start off really low. So this is quite useful if you like cough or make a, a bodily noise. You can you can actually if you wanted to say eliminate noise from a certain bit. Uh, you actually can just click on it like this and you can like create a, a, a pattern like that and you can eliminate noise which is quite useful so that's really all that I use when I'm making these podcast episodes and when you want to export it you just go to file um, exports onto disk and then you can just em export it as like an mp3 file high quality so that's it that's how I do my podcast I hope you learned something from here and I uh, hope to see you around soon thanks for watching see ya